Okay, so with this radio here, it will cover 18 megahertz up to like um, 1.3 or 2.3. I don't remember what it is. Um, I think if you just go through the function and... So it must be 1.3. Anyway, it does pick up sideband. It does sound good. But the sensitivity is so low on it that it's really just a novelty, okay? If somebody's probably anything less than 5.9 or 10 over 9, you're not going to hear them. Um, I was copying signals that were about S5. On the radio, I couldn't hear them at all in here. Um, so um, now, however, I could hear CW and FT8 pretty easily, but that's not really, you know, important. I mean, so this radio is kind of an experimental platform, and what's cool about this radio is maybe it will kind of shape the future of radios to come. And uh, manufacturers will realize, you know, hey, we'll make a radio that does more things. Um, hard to say. Uh, but, I mean, like for me, these are fun to play with. I don't talk on handhelds. You know, if I need to get on 2 meters or 440, I have regular radios for that. Um, I don't go hiking and you know, talk on radios like this. So I'm not concerned about the harmonics of the radio. I don't transmit on it. Um, and I'm talking about in the amateur bands. Um, outside of the amateur bands, I would never use this radio because you might burn it up. I don't know what kind of filtering there is on here, um, but if there is any at all, uh, it's going to put a strain on the finals in it whatever it uses it's not intended to do that in fact when you notice most of these radios aren't even intended to go on 220 megahertz and you'll see that they barely put any power out that's because of the way the bandpass filtering usually is anyway um, this particular version of the radio seems to be a little bit harder to find um, but uh, this firmware that's on here is sort of strange. The uh, whatever the hell that is. Um, I actually don't really care for how they changed the menu. Um, I like that little line that they used to put down the middle. So, um, I think I put a link in one of the videos earlier where you can go and get this firmware and flash it to your radio from the browser. I used Opera. Um, some other people have said that they needed to use Chrome. I know Chrome is, um, any Chrome-based browser, I think, uh, basically is what they're saying will work. And so... Um, I know Opera works. That's what I used. It was really easy. There's another guy that has a video, and he uh, is one of the people where I found the information, and I just searched for that name that I showed you on the bottom of the screen and found it on GitHub. And his method was a little bit different. He uh, pulled the binary file off of a Facebook group, and then he used the Who's Matt page, and then he uh, patched the firmware with a file that he downloaded. I didn't do that. I went over to the page, and they had a uh, flash from browser 
link and I clicked on it and flashed it to the radio so a <laughs> lot simpler um, I will put a link in here for that and I'm also going to put a link in here for this radio not this particular one but the other one because um, there's no deals on this so there's no reason to put a link on here um, I mean I guess I could in, in case you want to help my channel out and stuff uh, and uh, I'll put a link I guess um, it doesn't cost you guys anything different if you use one of my links um, I get like 2% 3% of whatever your purchase is so you know if I have enough people that use the link then I can order another radio to review and do experiments on and be your guinea pig um, I was gonna order a couple more uh, types of radios um, Radtel uh, RT470 but I didn't do it and now it's back up another 10-15 bucks um, I did order the Radoddity GC Five, which looks like a Bofang. Um, I am going to order one of the new uh, Bofang UV-17s that have the color screen, or what appears to be a color screen, but USB-C charging, um, because I believe they're another different variant. I'm not seeing the orange one with the plain screen anymore. Um, those radios have exceptional receive audio. They they put this radio to shame. But this radio is so damn cool. I mean, you've got your USB-C on the side here. You know, I mean, um, the battery life seemed really good. But now that I have this percentage gauge on here, it seems like it drops pretty quickly. It moves around. See? 81, 82. Um... So, I'm not sure that I give a crap about this firmware, um, but I have more than one of these. I have the other one, the regular K5. So, I don't know. Um, I don't generally take this radio out with me. Um, I've got a radio in my truck, but I do have a little car that I drive occasionally. And usually I'll grab this or something else. Um, but it's not often I take it with me. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm in VFO mode or what. Um, let's see here. I wish that, okay, this one thing I wish that they would do. You see this goofy little spot right here? Okay. Uh, Quan Shang, I would really like for you to put buttons there instead. I want a VFO A and B and a VFO and memory there and some other button, okay? That's not a full keypad. It's missing three keys that could be there. There is no reason they can't be there. Um, in fact, you could put even more keys. Or you could copy Bofang and put the keys there with the speaker behind the keys and then you could have a much larger speaker and the radio would sound great so of course um, they don't watch my channel they don't listen to what I say they don't care what I have to say so but that's what I would love to see with this radio I would love to see a radio that can do what this radio can do with uh, a clean output so this radio here, as far as I understand, the output's dirty on it. Um, I think it was like really dirty on either UHF or just VHF. I don't remember what it was, but um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I guess it's not super important because um, I'm not talking on it. and I think most hams don't really care. I mean, honestly. Um, but it'd be nice to see uh, a nicer, better radio, um, you know. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys.